Hey guys, welcome back to another video. And today we're going to be solving the lead code question largest number. All right, so in this question, we're given a list of non-negative integers and we want to arrange them in such a way that they form the largest number. So what does that mean? So let's say over here, we're given the values 10 and two. So over here, we can form two numbers. So one of the possibilities is coming up with the number uh, 102. So 10 and then two, so 102, 102, right? And the other option we have is we rearrange it. So instead of 10 and 2, we have 2 and 10. And that gives us the value of 210. So 2 and then 1, 0, 210. Okay, and which one between those two is bigger? Obviously, 210 is bigger. So that's what we're going to end up outputting. So now we want to see how do we exactly solve this question? So now the first thing that came to my mind when thinking about how to solve it was to just sort the list and then join everything together. So let's say that I sort it and uh, just to make sure, I'm going to be sorting it in a descending order. So if I sort this in descending order, it's going to end up giving me 102. Uh, a better example actually is to look at this over here. So if I sort it in descending order, I would get 34 first. But obviously that's not going to be the biggest number. But the biggest number will be when 9 comes in the beginning, right? So sorting it is actually not the best way to do it. So we want to make a small other changes to it in order to get the best answer. So let's see how we can do this. And one more thing that we're outputting this as a string. So let's just go through this step by step and see how that looks like. So this is the exact same uh, question as our example, 3, 30, 34, 5, and 9. And this is how we're going to be solving this. So we're going to have two pointers and I'll just represent each pointer by its color. So one of them is going to be in green color and the other is going to be in red. So the green pointer starts off always at the zeroth index and the red pointer is going to start off from the next index. So if green starts at index one, red starts at index two. So currently this is where our red pointer is going to start. So now what we're going to do is we're going to form two different numbers. So one number that we're going to form, we're just going to take between green and red is going to be taking the green value and adding that to the red value. So three, and by adding, I don't I mean doing three plus 30, giving us 33. By adding, I mean taking three and just putting the uh, next two values. So three and then three zero. And that ends up giving us a value of 330. And one more thing, if you noticed, um, so since we're adding it like this, converting these values to a string makes it a lot easier. Okay, so now we have 330. And what is the other combination? So over here, we took green first and then we took red. So now let's take red first. So if we take red first, we end up with 30 and then let's take green. So now let's put three. So these are the two values that we possibly have. So which one over here is bigger? So obviously 330 is the bigger value. So since 330 is the bigger value, so that's basically saying the same as, so first we have green and then we have red. And that is exactly the pattern that we have, green first and then red. So we can ignore this and we're done with it as of now. So now what's going to happen is that the green pointer is going to stay the same. But what's going to change is the red pointer is now going to go on to the next value. So now our red pointer is over here. And again, we're going to end up forming two different values. So we take green first, giving us three, and then red, giving us 34. So now we have 334. Now the other number is taking red first, so 34, and then adding green. So in this case, which one is bigger? So this one over here is bigger. And we got this by doing red first and then green. So that means the red value is going to be a better choice since it gives us a bigger value. So what we're going to do is we're going to swap these two values with each other. So let's just do that real quickly. So get rid of this. Okay, so that gives us 34 now since we're swapping it. And over here, we're going to have three. And one more thing is that we're currently done with this and we're going to move our red pointer again. So now our red pointer is going to go on to five. And uh, we do the same steps. I'll just go through this a little bit faster right now. So we have 34, so 345, and then we have 534. Obviously, 534 is bigger. So now we end up swapping those two with each other. So that becomes five, and this over here becomes 34. So let's just do that. So five over here and 34 over here. All right, cool. And one more thing that happens now, since we're done with that, our red pointer is going to end up changing to the last value over here, which is nine. So now we create the next two numbers. So that gives us 59 and 95. So which one is bigger? Obviously 95 is bigger. So again, we're going to have to swap those two values with each other. So we swap them and now the green value is going to now end up becoming nine. So we have nine over here 
and this over here ends up becoming 5. Okay, so that is going to be one complete iteration. So what exactly happened in that iteration? So if you notice, or if you even go back to our answer, we got our first value. So this is telling us that the first value that we're going to have is for sure going to be the value 9. So currently we have the first value in place. We don't need to worry about it and 9 is going to be our first value. So now what's going to happen is that we're going to remove our green pointer since we reached the ending with our red pointer. And over here what's going to happen, we're going to give a new green value and this is going to be the next value. So currently we were done with 9, so 9 is in its correct place. So we want to find what is going to be the next uh, values, right? What are going to be the next digits after 9? So to find that again, we're going to put a green pointer over here. And the red pointer is always going to be right after the uh, green pointer. So this is going to be our red pointer. And over here, we're going to be performing the exact same steps. So, so we'll be comparing, in this case, 303 with 330. And what happens over here, 330 is bigger than 303. So that means that we're going to end up swapping them. So let's swap this over here. So 3 over here and 30 over here. And uh, similarly, the red is going to change and it's going to move over by 1. So I'm pretty sure you get the point. Uh, and by the ending of this, what should be happening is by each iteration, we should be getting the correct value of the green spot. So in the first iteration, we got the correct value for this. In the second iteration right now, we're going to get the correct value for this spot over here. Then we're going to get the correct value over here and so on and so forth until we reach the uh, last but one value. And that's when we're going to stop with all of this. So just to kind of go through this, I'll just go through this and you can see what the end result looks like. So at the very ending, what happens is that we end up with this over here. And um, if you add all of these together into one number, we're going to end up with 9534330. So in other words, that's just going to be 9,534,330. So that over here is our largest number. I didn't go through all the steps because it would take quite a bit of time and I would highly recommend that you do go through all the steps if you still did not understand how this works. So now what I'm going to do is let's go through the code part of this and understand how the code looks like. All right, so over here, we're going to start off by changing everything inside of our nums. So currently, everything inside of a num inside of nums is an integer, but we want to change that to be a string. And why is that? So let's say we have the numbers 1, 2, 3. And when you add them, so you would actually be doing 1 plus 2, which gives us 3. But instead, what we want to do is when we add these two values, we want to be, so let's say we do 1 and 2. Instead of doing 1 plus 2, we want to get the value 12. So in order to do that, converting this into a string is going to make it a lot easier. So how exactly can we do that? So we can do list. And over here, we're going to use the map function. So we're going to do map. And we want everything to be a string, so string, and then for what? So for the list of nums. Okay, so by the ending of this, if you print out the, if you print out any of the elements in nums, it is going to be a string. Okay, so over here, we're going to check if the length of nums is less than two. So if we have something which is, uh, which does not have any length, or if we have something which has a length of one, then in that case, we're just going to end up returning whatever we have. So to do that, we can just do if length of nums is less than 2, or in other words, if it's equal to or less than 1, then in that case, we're just going to do return. So we can use the join function. So we're going to give it a string dot join. And the reason we're doing a string is because we want the output as a string. And then we're going to give nums. And the re and one more thing is that it's important that we convert it to a string because the dot join function only works for strings. So yeah, so now we got our answer for if it's a null value or if it has a value of one number in it. Okay. So over here, we're going to go on to our next condition. So to do that, we're going to end up um, having two of our pointers. So we had red and green, but in this case, I'll just call it X and Y. So X and Y are both going to start. So X is always going to start off at zero. And Y is going to be one more than X. So in this case, let's just make Y one. And this is not going to be our final code, but I'll just use this to explain how it works. So over here, we're going to have a while statement. So while, and what is the statement going to be? So while the x value is less than the length of nums and the y value is less than the length of nums. So that means that we've, uh, we haven't gone out of the range of the list yet, that only then we're going to go inside of our if statement. So over here, we're going to compare these two values. So how exactly are we going to end up comparing them? 
So to do that, let's make a, a function over here called compare. So this is going to take two numbers. So let's just call them x and y. So x and y are going to be the two numbers that we're talking about. And actually, to be more precise, we get x and y exactly from here. So x and y is actually going to be the index, right? So now we want to get them into the number itself. So how do we convert this into the number? So over here, we have two numbers. So one of the numbers is going to be nums x, sorry, nums x plus nums y. So that gives us one of the numbers, but currently that is a string. So over here, we're going to convert that string into an integer. So this is one of our numbers. And the other number that we're going to have, we want to convert to an integer, is just going to be the opposite. So nums y plus nums x. So over here, we formed two of our numbers. So over here, what we're going to do is we're going to return if the statement, so if nums x plus y is greater than nums y plus x, then in that case, we're going to return true. So if this is true, we return true. But if that is false, we're going to end up returning false. Okay, so now let's see how we can add this to our while loop. So over here, we're going to check if compare. So we're going to give it x and y values. And if this is true, that means that x plus y is bigger than y plus x. And in that case, we're just going to pass. We're not going to do anything. We're going to let it be as it is. But else, so else if this is not true, so that means that y plus x is greater than x plus y. And in that case, if you recall, we're going to be swapping these two values with each other. So how do we do the swap? So nums y and nums x. So nums y is going to become nums x. So let's do that over here. And nums x is going to become nums y. So this over here is swapping the two values with each other. And at the ending of this, for no matter what it is, we're going to increase our y value by 1. So by the ending of this, we're going to get the value for one iteration. But we don't just want one iteration, right? We want to be doing this until the x value reaches to the last but one value. So in order to make this a lot easier for us, we're going to put this inside of a for loop. So let's just remove this over here. And over here, let's put let's do a for loop. So for x in range, so we're going to be going up to the length of nums minus 1. So the last but one value. And over here, let's put our while loop inside of this for loop. And we also want to define the y value. So the y value is always going to be x plus 1. It's going to be the next value. And each time we're going to redefine this y, va y value. And by the ending of this, we should get our nums in the sorted order according to what we want. So once we get this, all we have to do is return. And we want to join these two each, uh, together instead of a string. So string dot join, and then we're joining the nums. OK, so if I submit this over here, it's actually not going to be correct. We're going to get it wrong at this condition over here. So 0, 0. And we ended up outputting the value 0, 0, which is actually wrong. It expects just one 0. So how exactly do we take care of this uh, simple uh, situation over here? So in order to do that, we're going to be using the map method again. But the way we use it is going to be a slightly different. So over here, what we're going to do is we're going to map it according to a Boolean value. So how exactly does this work? So let's just first do it real quick. So map, uh, we want it to be a Boolean value. And we're going to be using the nums list. And one more thing, make sure that we're doing this before we converted it into a string. So these numbers are still integers. So over here, if our numbers are equal to 0, that means that everything is going to end up as having a value of false. And if even one of these numbers is not a 0, we're going to have a value of true. So to check if all of our values are not zeros, we can do any. And then we can put this over here. And we can check if not any and then of this uh, mapped list over here. So what exactly does this mean? So over here, if let's say as we had, we had two zeros, right? So what's going to happen once we put it through our map over here, we're going to get two false, right? So we do not have any true, right? There's no truths inside of this. So in that case, what's going to happen, we're just going to end up directly returning the value zero. And that's it. We're directly returning the value zero and we're done with the function as it is. And even if one of the values is not a zero, uh, it may basically in the fact that not everything is a zero, then we're going to go past this if condition. We're not going to return anything. And we're going to pr proceed on doing all of these steps. 
So now when we submit this, we have accounted for that zero, zero um, parameter. And now our submission is accepted. So thanks a lot for watching guys. Hopefully this video helped you and don't forget to like and subscribe if the video helped you. Thank you.